Hello guys, this is Sumit K. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, today, uh, the topic is Google Cloud VPC routing. And this is one of the most important topic, uh, which is I have seen that people talk about very less. But uh, today I'm uh, going to uh, deep dive into, into this topic and we will cover as much as we can. And uh, if possible, I will try to show you uh, the real world demo or i'll try to show you like how vpc routing works uh, from uh, uh, you know from within the vpc or from outside of vpc and there and there are uh, if 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 you understand cloud vpc routing well then you then it's very easy for you to understand how the traffic is you know flowing from one place to one place to another place and and how uh, the the overall network infrastructure looks alike right so it is very important that you understand this topic uh, so that uh, it would be easy for you to for for you when you are moving into the cloud cloud journey okay so what is google cloud vpc routing uh, in general uh, google cloud routes define the path that network traffic takes from one virtual machine to the other and to the other um, instance or other destination right and these destinations can be inside your google cloud uh, vpc or it can be outside of it so in a vpc network uh, a route consists of a single destination prefix in a CIDR format and a single next hop. So when an, when an instance in a VPC network sends a packet, uh, Google Cloud delivers the packet to the route's next hop if the packet destination address is within the route destination range. Okay, so there are five types of Google Cloud VPC routing. Uh, system generated or default route. This is one of the default route that I have also shown uh, in my previous video where we have talked about uh, Google Cloud uh, VPC network overview. Uh, uh, when you when you create a network, when you create a VPC, uh, the, the system generated and default routes are automatically created by the VPC and the subnets. When you when you create uh, when you create the subnets, I'll show you um, how these system generated uh, play a crucial role and uh, where where can you see that. So under system, gen system, system generated or default route, there are two types of uh, route, which is system generated default default routes, and there is a subnet route. So I'll talk about it later. And then we have something called static route. So static route uh, is something when you forward the packet to a static route as a next hop. So let's say um, you uh, uh, let's say your static route next hop would be your instance or an internal pass through network load balancer. Uh, or next hop instance or internal load balancer or classic VPN or something like that. So where uh, where you define your static routes, right? Uh, dynamic routes, if you, you must have heard this dynamic routes like this. Dynamic route is basically used uh, when your destination uh, that don't conflict with the subnet route or is a static route. So it's a pair of a BGP session on a cloud router. So routes are added and removed automatically based on the learned route from the cloud routers in your VPC network. Okay, so I'll talk about this, how this dynamic routes actually works in a real world. Peering uh, routes is something when you have two VPC and you have uh, established a peering connection between them. So at that time that peering routes automatically creates, I can better say the programmatic routes. So those routes are created when you peer. This policy based route, um, again, this is, um, uh, this, this is policy based route are evaluated uh, basically, uh, be before the other routes are developed, policy-based routes can be applied to all the VMs in, in the network. To certain VMs selected by the network tag or to traffic entering the VPC network by way, by way of VLAN attachment that you identify. So policy-based routes are not exchanged through the VPC network pairing, but uh, this is hardly used, but uh, we'll, we'll see that. So you can see that I have a VPC, I've created two subnets, and I'll show you um, um, how many like how system generated or default routes are created when you create a VPC or when you create a subnets? Okay, so without wasting a time, let's jump onto the Google Cloud Console. Okay, so this is my Google Cloud Console. There is a default uh, uh, VPC network, and if you see uh, uh, routes, you'll see a lot of routes, but you'll get confused. So I don't want to you know uh, show that. But let's create a brand new VPC. Let's name it my VPC one. And as of now, let's create a VPC only. Okay. Okay. Now let's create a subnet as well. Okay. Subnet one, let's say Delhi. I think it's Asia. Let's 
Asia. Let me see that here from here. Shout out to. I don't know why the reason name is not listed here. This sh Google should given display the name over here. But anyways, uh, it says here South two and dot uh, two five five. So let's say one ninety two. Let's leave it by let's leave it default. I don't want any firewall rule. So okay, so what is that dynamic routing mode? Uh, let me just clear it about it. Uh, so the difference between your regional routing and the global routing in Google Cloud VPC is that regional routing allow cloud routers to learn and advertise routes within the same region, right? Uh, please pay attention within the, the same same region, like right? that's why it is regional. While global routing allow routers to learn and advertise route across all regions, right? So regional routing is a default uh, mode for your VPC uh, network. It provides you know, more control and isolation over the routing tables and traffic flows in each region, right? However, it also requires more configuration and management of the cloud router, you know, and VPN tunnel or interconnect for your each region. So it 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 brings some complexity. However, if you if you are going to the cloud global routing, which is an optional mode for VPC network, it simplifies the network to, uh, topology and configuration by using a single cloud router, VPN tunnel, or interconnect to dynamically learn and advertise routes to and from all the reasons right so that, that's what it is the, the definition is saying global routing lets you learn route dynamically to and from all reason with a single vpn or interconnect and cloud router however it also introduces a cross regional cost for the routes that are programmed in different reason from the cloud router okay so that, that is the only difference but as of now just just uh, leave it with the default DNS you know, server policy is something that you will see when we cover uh, dns policy like this is something that when you want to resolve your DNS from from you no know, like let's say a VM from on-prem wants to resolve the DNS query from the cloud, then you you need to have a DNS uh, server policy. This is a very complex topic. We'll cover this when we touch that DNS pairing part. Okay, let's create it. Meanwhile, I'll go to routes. I select my network. I'll select my reason. Tele view. Right now, it's, there is no routes because it's still creating your. You'll see, still creating your VPC network. You can see that uh, you'll see that one default route or system generated route. Uh, you can see if uh, if you want to talk to the public world internet, then your next hub will be the default internet gateway. Right. You'll see one more route um, because one more local routes because we have also created a subnet you see that right this is subnet level this is static route and this is a subnet level route i i talked about that right so this is was this was my ip range i defined for my subnet and you can see that if any vm wants to talk to um, uh, within this uh, ip range within this subnet uh, the next hope will be uh, the vpc network Okay, so this is the this two uh, net this two route are the uh, default or say automatically created by when you create a VPC and subnet and you cannot delete those routes right you cannot delete this you can see that the option is grayed out right even if you go to this internet one you cannot delete it oh I think this can be deleted but I think the local routes cannot be deleted yeah. So this is the uh, system generator routes uh, when you create your VPC network and subnets. I was also I also talked about uh, what are the static routes again. Is this is your static routes for internet for internet? The, the, you can you can modify it right. You can modify. Let's say I you don't want to send your you know you you don't want your VM to um, go to internet via the default internet gateway. So what what you can do you can maybe you can customize it. You can customize is uh, like okay uh, let's say my vm should go to something like your um, next gen firewall device right and that next gen firewall device have some have is behind the load balancer so you can set up um, some tags on your vms and you tell your vms okay uh, that if you want to go to internet you don't go to the default internet gateway you go to the uh, load balancer as the next hope 
and behind the load balancer you have some sort of next gen firewall or some sort of you know uh, firewall device and that firewall device will help you to uh, forward your traffic to the internet gateway right so you can define something like that so maybe let me cover other things dynamic and peering route okay let me show one diagram here so so here uh, this is a this is an, um, a real world architecture of uh, uh, google cloud uh, network infrastructure how they you know interconnected within within your google cloud how the vpcs are interconnected and how your vpc is you know connected to your data center to your on-prem data center via dedicated interconnect or via a you know um, uh, the havpn right <clears throat> So on my on my left hand side, this is a hub VPC. I, I named it hub VPC, where we have two subnet 10.1.00 and 10.1.2. And you can say we have a cloud router in US East and US Central, right? On my right hand side, we have some VPC, shared VPC. I'll talk about shared VPC later. But let's assume that this is the, this is the VPC and this is the VPC. This particular VPC is connected to your hub VPC using some firewall device or multiple NIC connectivity device you can say about, say about that right and this this particular shared vpc is connected to my hub vpc using the vpc pairing so you can see that um you can see that there are some when you connected the, when this vpc is connected to hub vpc there is a vpc pairing established and here we have some program routes so you can see 10.1.0.24 this is the this is my subnet right and 10.1.2.0.24 this is my subnet so by default it creates a programmatic routes where to go if you if your destination is this range in the hub vpc similarly uh, this vpc also create a programmatic route if this wants to talk to the shared vpc to 10.3.1.0 which is the sub which is the ip range of this subnet so this is what the pairing routes okay now we have some advanced route right so this vpc and this vpc are connected through a multi nic connectivity right this is 10.1.1 is the is the ip attached from hub vpc and 10.2.1 is the ip attached from the uh, shared vpc1 right so if, if if vm has to talk from vpc1 to the hub vpc then what would be the route so you can see that 10.0.1.0.24 right so this is the um, ip of range of subnet 1 so right so this is the advanced uh, routing the above routes will allow vm to talk to the on-prem environment via the advanced sorry uh, this uh, this advanced route is basically is the if this shared vpc wants to talk to the on-prem data center and then the advanced routes are created like that because this uh, this both the hub vpc and shared vpc are connected using the multi nic connectivity the advanced route allow to from to talk to the uh, uh, the on-prem data center via the hub vpc so that's why it's called the advanced route right same here like if um, uh, let's say it has to talk to um, you know shared vpc then the uh, the routes are reversed and you have a on-prem data center which are connected with dedicated interconnect the vlan attachment um, we have the cloud router here right cloud router one cloud router two as i shown here us east one us central so uh, so how this is how your on-prem is connected i'm not going deep dive into this hybrid connectivity part this is because this is again a very <clears throat> um, advanced topic which i will cover later okay so uh, the next thing which i wanted to show the dynamic routing right um we have covered static route we have covered peering route now the dynamic routing right we have also covered the advanced route um, which is something i've shown you so dynamic routing is is what is dynamic routing right if you are uh, let's say uh let's con okay this one if you say this if your own prime network and you have a google cloud network and they have they are connected with the now uh, vpn tunnel like so what happens like there are there is a cloud router here there is a cloud router here so it automatically creates it automatically advertise your subnets right to the on-prem 
or or whatever thumbnail that are created on your on prem it automatically advertise so that is the benefit of your dynamic routing right you don't need to manually create the routing when you create a new subnet it automatically advertise all the subnets so this is the um this is the basic architecture of uh, havpn you can see that uh, i have two tunnels um on it because you have two interface if one tunnel goes down then another vpn tunnel will, will take place i'll cover this in in an in a separate video because this is again a very advanced topic okay so uh that's i think uh, i have covered all the routes uh, routing method uh, if you want to see your default route you can see a lot of uh, you know uh, local routes are created here you can see that if you click on default and if you go let's go to let's go to delhi view so um if you go here one second i'll show you one thing so you can see how many you know subnet routings are there we have some static routes as well you can see that in, this is single for every uh, every vpc and rest of the routes are subnet routes why why there are so much routings subnet routings are here because we have when you go to default vpc you will see around uh, uh, how many is there it's 39 subnet sites if you go here you'll see 40 so 39 and one your default internet gateway right so if a, if from one subnet if if a routing uh, let's say if your vm uh, talks from one subnet to another subnet there has there is some uh, there is a routing right there is some default routing in in place so let's say this is my this is my Delhi region, right? Asia South 2. This one. 1019. If you click on that, you can see that the default hope is def you know the default VPC. Now if you want to go to let's say um, US Central and you search here again, the next hope is default VPC. So this is all about uh, routing. I hope. So Google Cloud Routing is a powerful tool that can <clears throat> help you improve the performance and reliability of your applications. Um, with um, by using Google Cloud Routing, you can route traffic more efficiently, and you can ensure that your applications are always available, and can also reduce the risk of the outage. So uh, the benefit of using the Google Cloud Routing are like improving the performance liability and availability right so i hope this video has been helpful uh, if you have any questions please leave a comment in the comment section so thank you so much for watching it i'll see you next time till then bye bye take care